Good morning, saints, and welcome to our Sunday morning message on this June 19th in the year of our Lord, 2022. We are also celebrating this weekend a Juneteenth National uh, a holiday where we remember the complete ending of slavery where everyone knew about it, including the people in Texas. And at the same time, we're celebrating Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to those who are listening and with us this morning. So saints, let us bow our heads in prayer as we receive God's word. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O God, our rock and our redeemer. O Lord, open thou my lips that I might declare your praise in the presence of your people. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, saints, once again, happy Father's Day to the fathers who are listening to us. The theme of our meditation this morning is the Lord's choice, the Lord's choice. And it's taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. So, saints, what is it about? the Lord's choice. Well, if we look at it, saints, life is a series of choices, isn't it? After we become believers, the decisions we make must be consistent with our commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, once we become Christians, we must be determined to live like it, amen? You see, conversion to Christianity is always a change of direction. You're going one direction, but that direction has been away from God. Now you're going the other direction. You're going toward God as we decide to live his way and do things his way according to his will. You see, our text for this morning, the Lord Jesus ends his famous Sermon on the Mount by speaking of the two roads that we must go or that we have a choice to go in this life as we head toward judgment because the world and all of us will be judged. But we will soon learn from our text that we're confronted with these two choices in life, these two roads. But for us as believers in Christ Jesus, there's only one road, only one choice. That's the Lord's choice. So saints, let's open up our Bibles to Matthew 7. 13 and 14. And the Lord Jesus said these words, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. We're going to start off, saints, with the wide gate, the other choice, the wrong choice. You see, although the Lord begins with his choice, let us begin with the warnings against making the other choice, following that other road. Our Lord Jesus warns, he says, for wide is, is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. The broad or wide gate or road is always right before us. Saints, it is the way of the world, the way of our flesh, the way of the evil one, the devil. In fact, it is so wide that we can observe four things about this gate. One, there is no single hindrance to entering it. There are no roadblocks, okay? No tolls, anything like that. Two, there's plenty of people entering its wide doors at any time. It's always packed and lined up. Three, it appears to be the only gate because there's so much activity going on around it. And four, the gate is wide enough to include anything and everything, including all philosophies, all beliefs, no matter how extreme, all appetites, all passions, 
all liberties and licenses, all sin and selfishness and evil, you got it, you can do it. But the Lord Jesus tells us this way is especially dangerous, mainly because it's so easy and can be followed without thought because we're born as sinners. This is a road we are born into unless we change direction. You see, there's plenty of space to walk on the wide road. There's plenty of space for the attractive things of the world to have a stop to entice and seduce us. And it's so easy to travel, as I said before, there are no potholes. There's no, bar there's no uh, borders, nothing there, crappy streets, no. There are no hedges, no restrictions to slow down your journey. However, you will stop as you are attracted or invited for there are attractions that stir the mind and the flesh, our aesthetic values and sensual desires, cultural interests and pleasurable stimulators, but then we'll fill up and then go on to the next, next attraction on this same endless and dangerous, when I say endless, because it does have an end, but this same dangerous, well-paved well road. Because you see, this is the perfect road or way for the thoughtless. It's the perfect road for the undisciplined, for the lazy, for the worldly, the ungodly, the materialistic and the carnal person. It's right there for them. Now, saints, we must consider the Lord's choice. The Lord's choice is the narrow gate. For the Lord said, enter through the narrow gate, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. You see, saints, the Lord Jesus is telling us that the narrow gate is the way to eternal life. The narrow gate is the way to spend eternity with him. The narrow gate is the road by which we can navigate with him by our side in this world. It is very specific and very few will receive it because of the devil, the world, and their own flesh. For the believer, there is no other choice. There's only one way and not many will enter it. Isn't that tragic and sad? But we don't know who, so we gotta keep directing people to have a detour, detour to God. But what is this way, this narrow gate? This way is belief in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If a person wishes eternal life, he has to come to God through Jesus by faith. He must enter this narrow gate. There is no other way, there's no shortcut. Remember the gate or way is narrow. Being narrow, there are several things which are very important that we must learn if we're going to enter this narrow gate. One, you must turn from the wide gate, the road you're on. Turn from following the crowd, okay? Turn from the pull of the activity and attractions of this world. In other words, saints, you and I must repent of our sins. We must know we need God. We must know this world and the things of it are going to one day end, and we don't want to end that way either, or end that way as well. Two, we must search for the narrow gate and seek it out diligently. That means we must seek out and be determined to do the will of God. Once we know who God is, we must seek that out and do it the same way Cornelius did, if you were here for our Bible study this morning. Three, you must enter immediately when you find the gate, when the gospel is preached, because that's the road to the, that leads us to the narrow gate. When the gospel is preached, <clears throat> it must be received by faith immediately, not tomorrow or the next day or next week, because tomorrow is not promised to us. Well, then the question is, well, pastor, how do I enter the narrow gate? How do I get to heaven? Well, first thing, you must stoop and bow down. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard for us. We can be so arrogant and proud, but we must stoop and bow down, become a little child in relationship to God. We must believe in Jesus, trust, and obey him. 
We must confess our sins and know we cannot do this on our own. <clears throat> Next, you must strip down. Take off that old man, that old woman. You got to stop doing what you did before. You know the way. You got to follow it. Three, it won't be easy to do the first two. In other words, you must struggle. You must struggle against the flesh. The flesh isn't going to want to bow down to God. The flesh is not going to want to say, I'm sorry. The flesh will not want to put off things that we enjoy doing that are detrimental to us and separate us from a relationship with God and other people. We must struggle against the flesh. That's why we're here this morning hearing the word and we study the word and we remember our baptism. We take the Lord's Supper. All these things so we can remain on the narrow road, which we will call the King's Highway. Remember, the narrow way is very narrow and it is hard and difficult to travel. The road is surrounded by our fears, by threats, and this wilderness called the world. When you live for Christ, the world will hate you and oppose you. You will also have the temptation to return to the way of the world. The wide gate is, will be very strong and you will see detours. It will seem that those who live differently prosper and you don't as you feel you should, but do not be fooled. The Lord is saying to be a Christian requires self-denial and the will to struggle against the flesh and fear and the evil one. We do that through the Spirit of God, but we must receive the Spirit of God and work with him. The narrow gate or road, remember, is unpaved. It is covered with gravel and rocks. There will be times when you will not see the results of your efforts or see the road ahead of you. It takes strong will and determination and personal sacrifice to stick on this road because it demands walking by faith and not by sight. It means enduring hardness or harshness and suffering. For as the world treated Jesus, so he will treat you so it will treat you and me. That's why it's a narrow gate and few find it. We also must remember that both roads, the wide gate, the narrow gate, have an end. There is an end to this road. The wide or broad road ends. There is an end to it but the traveler does not pay attention to its end. The traveler does not look at all of the signs that direct it. The road has so many attractions that he or she fails to see the end is immediately ahead. Therefore, he or she runs into that end not prepared to face the abyss that awaits them. Yes, you had all the good things in this life but you won't know the eternal blessings that come to no end because these things of this life will end. In other words, they enter the wide gate, they travel the broad and easy way and end up perishing and experiencing destruction, eternal separation from God, and the things they put their trust and hopes in no longer exist. However, not so for those who enter the narrow gate those who hear and see believe. The narrow way does not end. It leads to a glorious world that is yet unseen, but it opens up an unbelievable life to the traveler. The only end, it ends in heaven, and then in heaven it goes on and on and on, because you don't need to travel the road anymore. You've entered the capital city of God. You've reached your destination, which lasts forever. So finally, St. Philip, the Lord commands us this morning on this Father's Day, this Juneteenth Day, remember our slave ancestors trusted and believed in God. That's all they had. And they used the scriptures so very much to strengthen their faith and preserve their faith. Also remember our fathers, Christian fathers who went before us, who taught us how to pray, who took us to church, who lived a godly example along with our mothers taught us to walk the narrow gate. 
You see, it requires commitment, determination, discipline, self-control, and self-denial like our ancestors had. There is little space along its path that is difficult to get through. However, as believers, we will shun the wide, inviting way as the way of the flesh, the world, and the devil. We know it has an end, and that's not where we want to be. We, by faith, choose the Lord's way, for it leads to life, the true life, to the only life worth living. We do this by the power of the Holy Spirit, not us. It leads to the life everlasting with him whose way was just as much a narrow path, but who entered the glory of God, preparing a place for us. Saints enter in at his gate, conquer in his strength and weakness, conquer in his strength all the weaknesses of your flesh. Overcome through him all the assaults of the world and the devil, no matter in what guise they may appear. The end of heaven is worth a thousand battles. In his name, make the right choice, or the Lord's choice, your choice. In Jesus' holy name. So saints, bless your day. I hope this message has been a, a blessing to you. Enjoy it. Remember your father, whether he's with you or whether he's in heaven. If you are a father, continue in the ways of your fathers, showing our children the love and the grace of God, Keep and keeping them on that narrow road and gate so they'll enter the city of heaven. God bless you all. See you next week. Amen.